going on YouTube? How you guys doing today? We got we got a special video today that's going to be somewhat different from uh, all the recent uploads that I've been doing. So what makes this video special is that I actually, and I said I was never going to spoil anything, but I actually became really close to the world record the other night. And what I want to do is I want to use that video as a perfect opportunity to kind of explain about the early hammer, the tricks and stuff, because there's going to be a lot of people on YouTube who doesn't watch my live streams who will never really get their questions answered for the early hammer uh, manipulation or pretty much what's going through my mind. So the other night I got a really good run, very close to the world record. I know it's I'm going to spoil it, but I'm going to go through this run and kind of break it down and do a lot of commentary. And we're going to watch back through and uh, see where we can save time and see what some of the mistakes were and kind of explain uh, how the early hammer manipulation worked. So get ready for that. Let's go. All right, let's get this run on the go. So essentially upon starting this run, we're just going to go straight into early hammer manipulation and exactly what's going on with early hammer manipulation. So within a run, in my mind, what's going on is that right now the power, the power is off on the NES. As you can see, the hammer brother's not moving or anything like that. Uh, the hammer brother's stuck. Uh, that means the power is off in the NES, but for some reason the capture card or whatever happens It doesn't actually remove the image. It stays on so I'm powered off right now Okay, I have a hotkey on my emulator in the bottom left corner that hotkey is P and I use that to pause the emulator And then I use backspace to put the emulator on the very first frame or the frame before the frame that starts when when I press play so the idea is that I need to press power and the the pause button on the emulator at the same time. And so that's what I'm trying to do for the for the most part. So that's what I do right here. Okay. So it's power off. I click on it and then I try and power on at the same time. So ideally what you want to watch is the Luigi, right? I watch the Luigi for when he bumps his head on the ceiling and comes back down. When Luigi bumps his head and comes back down, you could see when something's not lined up as it would like kind of look like a wave. So if you just watch Luigi's head, we're going to slow it down a little bit so you guys can get like a better look. So you see Luigi, he's going to bounce. And when he hits his head, he's going to come down. And you can see that we're on the pretty much the same frame. So I'll rewind it a bit. We'll watch it one more time. All right. So watch if you watch Luigi's very closely, you can see they are that's the exact same. Right? That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'll watch Luigi's, I'll watch them bonk their heads. Sometimes I watch the power-up. You can see Mario grabs the power-up, bounce on the Goomba at the same time. So, it's a it's a pretty consistent method of, like, watching. I mean, you just, you can tell when there's something different. So, so that's what I do. So now, uh, you can't really see on the bottom, but I normally wait until frame 1,630 something. So I start about right now. Um, I developed a brand new uh, D-lag strategy for 1-2. So I actually start a little bit earlier than the task now so that I can go slower. So everything I've done for early hammer manipulation right now, all it is is like power on at the same time and then start a little bit ahead of the task so that in case I get bad RNG, I'll be fine. So here's the first thing. Nintendo put four enemies in this section. You got the three bouncing Koopas and then you have the Koopa on the ground that walks. The idea is to do this section without loading that fourth Koopa on the ground to the right. I don't want to load him. If I load him in, it's going to lag. The game cannot handle four enemies on the screen at once. When you get four enemies, the game starts freaking out. So the idea is to go slow, jump, and then get that first one off screen so that whenever I move to the right and load the fourth one, I have actually only have three loaded because the first one despawned with the height of the screen. So I do that, and now I just get rid of the lag. It seems like it's super complicated, but that's all I'm doing. I'm just using the screen to go higher so that the bottom one doesn't load before you know the first one so i get the first one off so that's fine that's it that's all i'm doing so far that's super easy that's all i'm not doing anything so this level i'm not doing anything special nothing lags here but this section right here lags so what i do is i do a turn back and land on the music note here and the reason i do that is to give that paragoomba time to move to the left 
because if I don't give the Paragoomba time to move to the left, what happens is that whenever I load these two Goombas and the Piranha Plant, that almost makes four enemies, right? You can see he just went off the screen, so I didn't create any lag. Now, I, I didn't actually know that there was a reset in this playback, which is fine, because we can actually watch uh, the Luigi's one more time as an example of a different attempt and see what happens here. Perfect again, a perfect reset. So we're just going to fast forward a little bit here. I do the same thing, kind of like a little review. You guys got, you guys kind of get to see it in action after I just pretty much uh, explained it. So as I said, you know, I jump, I wait, let it go off screen, and then I load the last Koopa. Very easy. All right, we'll fast forward to 1-2, same thing. Let... Let that Paragoomba go to the left more so that when I load the two Goombas in the Piranha Plant, he's not there. It works out great. And this is exactly, this is all I'm trying to do in World 1. Just power on the consoles at the same time and then just follow this. Exactly what I'm telling you. You don't have to think of anything else. So I'm a little behind the task from that slowdown. Uh, this Fortress doesn't lag. So you can do this Fortress normally. Yep, very easy, very standard Fortress right now. Boom, boom. I dipped a little bit there, which means I'm going to go slow. So I, I really need to catch up to the task here. I need to get some movements of one and I need to get some other things. There you go. Movement of one. Okay, so here's the next thing that I need to do. In this section right here, there's four beetles, right? And we already said if there's four enemies on the screen at once, the game's going to lag. So what I do is I need to grab this beetle before I load the fourth one. And throw him out of the way so that whenever I slide down and load them, there's only three. Now, I know I didn't load him and I know I didn't create lag because there's a big space between this beetle and this beetle, right? Um, if I go back five seconds here, um, I can show you that the beetles actually spawn all in the same like sequence. You can see right here the space between these two beetles. This is how all the beetles are this space right so if i throw this i can see these two beetles are the exact same distance but then this one is huge so i didn't load it up so i didn't create any lag that's that's like my that's the game's way of being like you didn't lag all right keep it going so then i'm good now right that's pretty much and i don't have to make you know i don't have to play perfect i just have to get ahead of the task and and for anyone on youtube who's never watched any of my streams who's watching this video right now like, the task isn't, like, an amazing thing. It was designed so that I could keep up with it and then get the early hammer. There's nothing special about the task. There's nothing fast or crazy. It's, it's designed so that I can either keep up with it or stay ahead of it while applying these D-lag strats and all that stuff. So, um, there's nothing, nothing else special in World 1. Nothing else lags. Uh, hammer Brother doesn't lag. This level doesn't lag. So, I'm not focusing on the task or anything. The only thing that I do want is I want to get a mushroom card from this level because the way the manipulation set up for World 2 is that I'll always get a star or a flower in 2-1. So if I get a mushroom here, I never have to worry about the fanfare. Uh, chat's not closed for me. No, I can see it. All right, so uh, the best part about watching playbacks is we get to fast forward through the auto scroller. In terms of early hammer manipulation, the auto scroller, nothing. Nothing changes. Nothing. This auto scroller doesn't lag, which is amazing. We don't have to worry about anything here. Nothing lags, right? So, what do we have so far for early hammer manipulation? We have power on the consoles at the same time, which I kind of gave you a little tutorial on, and then change those three levels to get no lag. That's it. <laughs> That's all you need to do. Don't even think about trying to do any, of, any other things because it doesn't matter. Okay, so the next thing is going to be World 2 Level 1. And the thing is about the early hammer manipulation is that in retrospect to whenever I actually press start and start the run compared to whenever I power them on is going to be different because you can see I'm a little bit ahead of the task. So I have to wait on top of 2-1 and enter the level at the same time. The reason I have to enter the level at the exact same time is because I want to get the same end level time as the task, right? I want to time, I want to time the jump and I also want to get the same end level time. So if I start three seconds earlier, 
I'm gonna get a smaller end game time, which means when it counts down to kick me out of the level, it's gonna count down faster, right? A 184 is gonna count down faster than a 186, which means I'm gonna be all disoriented. And I've already made that mistake, so I don't wanna do that. I don't need to enter the level on the exact same frame. I don't have to enter perfectly, just pretty much at the same time so we get the same level timer. So I wait, now we enter at the same time. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Here, this level lags, but if we destroy one, two, three, it doesn't lag because we killed all the enemies. If I didn't do those three enemies, th this level would lag, so that's it's a good thing that's set up like that. All right, so this is the next scenario. So as you can see, I got to the card before the task, which means my frames are gonna be a little bit skewed versus when I get the card. That's why I don't get the same card every single time because I don't have to actually get to the card at the exact same time. I just have to hit that one frame once I enter the level. So as you can see, you got the green blocks counting in on the task video. And as soon as the green block flashes on the center, that's exactly when I want to press jump. Boom. That's exactly when I press jump. See, I got a star, the task got a mushroom, and that's because I got there earlier, so the card cycled more. Hammer Brother facing right, that's the exact movement I want. Now, I want to enter this level at the same time, but it's not as, like, critical because it's we end the level pretty much at the same time, 2-1. This level doesn't lag, so I don't have to worry about anything. As long as I don't shoot any fireballs, which I've done before, which sucks. You know, I won't create any lag. And then same thing as 2-1 as this level. I want to hit the center thing as soon as it fills. Boom. I want to get it. Jump. And for anyone who watches these attempts, the best way to track if I've, like, nailed it or not is we can watch the screen transition between the TAS and the playback. So I'm going to put it on very slow right now. Okay? So if you watch the TAS and the actual game feed, if you watch the cards right now, you can see they kind of flash like two frames apart. And then the screen transition. So I was... You know, thank you guys so much. So as you, as you watch in slow mo, it's, it's really interesting to watch this in, in slow motion because you get a really good idea of when I'm timing it versus when I actually hit it, okay? I have a three frame window here from when the block fills. So right, I'm looking, block fills, right? Couple frames, block fills, and then as soon as it, boom, I got it. So I was about two frames late there, which is okay. Two or one frames, which is okay. So if you watch the cards in the bottom, the task cards and the game cards, you can see I'm about one frame later. So watch the screen transition. It's crazy. Look at this. Going slow. I know. Boom. So it's like the task was ahead. So I might have been actually a frame early, but I got the correct movement, which is good because I timed it well. So let me go ahead and speed this back up again. Right on. Okay. So this level right here, if I didn't rub up against this wall, this level would create one lag frame. For some reason, it just keeps, it always creates one lag frame. I don't know exactly what the problem is, but if I body rub here and jump over like that, I don't have to worry about any lag frames. And that's it in this level for lag frames. That's it in this level for lag frames. I don't have to worry about that. And then just do this level normally. And the fortress in the early hammer manipulation is actually the hardest thing to time because you have one good frame, one bad frame, and one good frame. So no matter how you slice it, it's a single frame trick. Very hard to do. But you get two frames that work. So it's like, you know, builds in, gets it, boom. Looking beautiful. So now, the Hammer Brothers, they do the over the Mushroom House, they do the exact same movement. They got the, they got the exact same movement in the task, okay? Now, if you watch the task, if you continue to watch the task, you can see it sets me up to actually try and skip the music box. But I don't really go for that because you do, it is somewhat of a time waste. It's like all, it's like a two and a half second time, time waste, right? All right. So that's actually in the video playback. So here we go. 
So now I got the early hammer. So let's get this run started. This this is a, a very good run. Um, the first world says plus 3.29. It, it, it's all relative to when I get to world 2. It doesn't make a huge difference. Mainly because it's... I get to world 2 at the same time every time. It, it doesn't change. The only thing that I can work on is not... Nice. Very nice. Very nice uh, pyramid there. And I don't know what he was doing there. That doesn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, the only time save that I can do in early hammer manipulation is actually trying to start my timer as late as possible after the task and then catch up with good RNG in World 1. That's about it. Alright, so this is the start of the run. Really good run right now. We got a, we got a really, really good run going on. Um... Mainly because I got the early hammer manipulation to work. Very nice. So we just have uh, airships, which we can actually skip here. Because airships. We don't. We all know airships. We don't have to worry. And we got a solid fire kill. A movement of one. Warpless fire kill. Easy. Try and go for the off-screen wand grab. Do not get it, unfortunately. Ooh, this music's fitting. So we saved 1.4 seconds because... We caught up to the task in World 1, but also we're behind a little bit, which means we didn't waste as much time waiting in World 2. So, it's all relative. It's all the same time. Pretty much World 1 and 2. Right on. We got the first frame jump there. I didn't even remember I got the first frame jump. That's actually pretty sick. Um, yep. Yeah, take that, Mr. Bloops. Get the heck out of here. We get P-Speed. And we nailed it. That's, that's a pretty good jump. I, I could have jumped further if I waited longer, but... We don't, we don't need to worry too much about that. It, that that's completely fine. Um, now that I'm on an early hammer run, and I've been getting early hammers lately, I'm not that nervous right now for this run, but I do always, I need 3-2 to work, and I need to not get runaway bro in this world. So, luckily 3-2's working really nicely lately for me. P-speed, great. That's one of the hardest tricks to stay consistent with. It really doesn't like to work all the time. Make sure I get three coins. I almost had 22 coins there. Gotta watch out for coin ships, right? We gotta worry about peace speeds, hammer brother movements, coin ships, coin count, score count, overworld movements. What's going on in my inventory? There's just so much crap all the time. When I saw that movement, I was like, I'm safe. There's no way I'm getting run away. So what, even though I got a movement of two, I'm actually pretty happy that I got, you know, that he moved down into the right. That makes me feel safe. Alright, doing some pretty solid jumps. I did get 33 coins, but I looked at my score, and I feel pretty safe. I need to get a 3 in my 10s digit to get a coin chip. So, uh, I'm pretty safe right now. So, I want the Hammer Brother to move back, which he does. And now I'm saying to myself, if that Hammer Brother can move left, that would be great, because I could kill him, then kill the other one, and then the Hammer Brothers are done. That'll be perfect. No door 3 and no door 4. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. No door 3, no door 4. So I want him to, and he does, man. That makes me so happy. And I got the bottom pattern, too, which makes me, it makes me even more happy. So we move left. So now I get to do one extra level without Hammer Brother movements, which is a time save. Um, we do a couple extra map movements, so it like all evens out, and then we got top patterns, so it's like not the best, right? We could definitely do better. Uh, I left the task video playback uh, for this run because I wasn't really feeling the controller cam the other day, so kind of left it open, which is not a big deal. Not a big deal. All right, and this level's pretty casual, pretty standard. So now, now that this world, now that this world worked. Like, I didn't get Runaway Bro, and I got 3-2 P-Speed. The only thing I'm thinking about is 3-9, the H-Jump. The famous H-Jump. Okay? So, it's like standard World 3 right now. But, like, the nerves are naturally heightened, because I have the early hammers. So, like, this runs crazy. And for anyone watching on YouTube who doesn't know, the world record actually has one hand. So, I can get all the way to World 8 and be plus 18 and still world record. So, I have lots of... Lots of buffer time. I obviously don't want to make any mistakes because I want to get a sub 50. I want to I want to try and save 36 seconds somewhere. Um, so I'm st obviously still going to try and play my best. All right. So now this is my nerves kind of shoot up a little bit when doing this level. That that 
Dude, that Koopa can really troll you. You get the jump, do a little turn. Dude, I almost messed that up. Let's actually let's actually run that back for a second. Guys, check this out. Okay. So the way I like to do this is that whenever you do a jump on Babombs, your your jump height is actually fixed. You can only really jump like this high or like this high. You can't do a full jump off them. So I use the side jump off the off the bomb to like give me a consistent jump all the time. Uh, however, if you guys watch, you can see how close I cut it to that other hammer brother or that other bomb. Yo, let's go even slower here. I love slow mo. Check this out. Oh, that is so close. Look at that, man. If I hit that bomb, I'd be dead. Like the run would be over pretty much. I'd lose like 15 seconds. That is so close to hitting that bomb, right? And then look at that. My body was so close to that. And then I almost hit the music note. Holy crap. I almost lost that right there. Look at that. I don't know how I didn't touch that music note. That's crazy. All right. Cut it so close. Huh? Now that that level's done, we're pretty good. Everything's looking good so far. So, in Warpless, every world has its own thing, right? I guess for early hammer manipulation, world one is don't create any lag frames, power on. World two is get the early hammer. World three is don't get runaway, bro. World four is don't get runaway, bro, I guess. World four is very hard for early hammer because I can't break the brick. So I got to chase the hammer brothers. World five is don't get movements of four right and don't get screwed over world six is don't get the extra hammer brother world seven is the clips and world eight is the hands it's crazy <laughs> all right Go for the fire kill nailed it get wrecked nerd all right so let's fast forward through this start world four whoops all right so like i said world four is scary I'm just going to pause it there really quick. This hammer brother right here. When I beat level one, I want him to move right here. Right? When I beat level two, I want him to move down and come back up. And then I can fight him right away right here. If he doesn't move right and he moves left, then the only thing I can do is that whenever I beat level two, he moves down and over or down and up. And then whenever I beat level three, he moves up and right back here again. That's the only other option. There's two ways that I can kill this hammer brother before he gets all the way over here. Because if he's right here and I beat this level, he's obviously going to move down. And if he's right here when I beat this level, he's going to keep moving down right here. And if, if he's right here and I beat this level, he can only move there. He can't move on top of me when I beat a level, right? So that's what makes it. Normally in Warpless, I have a hammer to break right here. So there's so many options. If he moves left here, then I just go down and kill him, right? So I, I have much more leeway. But in this one, I can't use the hammer. So I have to come all the way across and go down. So that's what I'm hoping for. That's what that's what I need him to do. All right, we got pretty basic strats here. Looking good. Clean basic strats. Right on. So unfortunately he moved, unfortunately he moved right here, right? So when I, what I'm thinking to myself is like, this sucks because if I beat level two, he can move right here, but I still can't fight him, right? So whenever I beat level three, he'll move left and down, beat the fortress, he'll move down and down. So what I need him to do after I beat level two is actually do a movement of four, sad face, move back up, and then when I beat level three, he moves over. So that's my only other option for like safety. Um, now the hammer brother can move all the way over to the left and, and the run actually be fine, but the odds of that are so, 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 so small. So, normal strats didn't um, didn't make a mistake, which is really good. That's exactly like what we want. Whee! Exactly what we want. Okay. So he moved back up. So now I have to chase him pretty much. I can't I can't catch up to him. I have to fight him after level four. I, and I know that, which is scary because if the other two hammer brothers come on over, 
Right? So this is when I this is when I start getting nervous. Right on. Just wanted to switch up the music a little bit there. All right. So this run is actually really hot so far, but we didn't really get good uh, Hammer Brother RNG right here, which kind of sucks. So we move down, right? Much like I said, I can't do anything about him. And I'm not getting movements of one either. Uh, this is the hardest level in World 4 uh, to stay comfortable with and not make mistakes. Very nicely done. Oh, that fortress always looks awesome. The fortress always looks awesome, but fortunately... So I gotta chase this hammer, brother. So now I'm worried because if I get a movement of four, I can kill him. However, I got a movement of four. So I got that, which to me is like, uh, uh, this hammer, brother, right? There's very small movements where I can kill him before he runs all the way over here. And the earlier I kill him, the more likely I am to get movements of one. Um, as you can see, the hammer, brother, in that position, when, you know, with what he did, it was impossible for him to do movements of one in world four. There's none there. Oh, that was so close, dude. We got we got to run that back, guys. We got we got to run that one back. That one was so close. Let's see this in very slow speed. What? It was in. It was clearly in my head. We got to watch this one more time. Okay. Yep. Very easy. Jump up. Yep. I bounce, it's like a medium jump off of the lack two. There you go. And then I get the super swim by ducking. Yep. All right, look at this. This is crazy. This is crazy. Look at this. There it is. When I saw that shot, I was like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. And then it cornered. <laughs> okay, right. it's already in my sprite right now. And it... <laughs> that is crazy. Cheer to the janky hitbox. That is crazy. Okay, let's put the speed back up. Nice. Let's go. All right, so. The Hammer Brother back to where we started. Let me uh, pause it just one more time really quickly for you guys. Um, as you can see, like I said before, in, in this entire section, there's nowhere the Hammer Brother can do a movement of one. So the idea is to kill him early, and if you don't, then you're getting all movements of two. Like, I've gotten one, two, three, four, five movements of two, where if I beat the Hammer Brother right here, I could have gotten one, two, three movements of one. I could have, which means that's a one point second time save just from beating him early. Okay, so the Hammer Brothers are there. That's amazing. So I said in the run, I need the bottom Hammer Brother, right? Let's, let's do it really quick. Okay, when you see these movements right here, I fight this bro. I don't want to fight either of these, but I want to do level six because it's faster than five, right? So what I want is I want this hammer brother to move left. So he's there. And when I music box, I can fight six and then he's stuck up there. And I want this hammer brother to move right so that whenever I beat the fortress and the music box lets them move again, he can only do a movement of one somewhere. That's all I want them to do. I want the bottom to move right, the top to move left, right? It's like, whoop. Weep. That's all I want. Top left, bottom right. Boom. That's exactly what they did. I felt like I got pretty lucky there. That's not actually that much luck. That's like not even that crazy luck because I have the music box. But finally, right? Like finally, I call out a movement and I get it. Like finally. It, 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 there, it, there is a possibility. So I'm gonna give you guys one more example here. If, the, if both of these Hammer Brothers are in the bottom right here, and let's say theoretically after every level, they just switch between each other. One went left and one went right. They just swapped the same spaces, right? So I beat the Hammer Brother here, then they swapped. I moved freely over here and beat this level. They swapped. I beat this Fortress. They swapped. They're not even in my way. So I save a music box there, which means when I get to World 5, I can use a music box from the bottom bros, and then I can try and skip the Cloud Bro. That would be an 11 second time save right there. But the odds of these guys not being in your path to beat the fort, to beat the world, like that's what it is. Like think about it. I start here and I go all the way through here, right? 
down, across, and over. Which means two Hammer Brothers can only stay within like this area. I mean, they can shift over here and come back. They can do some shifting, but by the time I get to six and the fortress, they gotta be like over here and out of my way. It never happens. And when it does, you still have to skip the Starbro in World 5, which is even crazier. So World 4 has gone great. I almost lost my Fire Flower in 4-4. 4-1, 4-2, 4-3 uh, worked great. Uh, the Fortress, the really scary Fortress, that wor worked great. 4-4 uh, four, four was okay, it wasn't the best. And then the last two levels here, and the Hammer Brothers kind of worked for me. So now I get to do my my normal uh, map movements, which is good. Right? Normal map movements. Boom. Alright, we'll go ahead and skip the auto-scroller because it's super long. That's what they think. I'm going to eat some food a little bit here. So the way the Hammer Brothers work in the overworld can affect the the boss here so in in my mind okay in my mind right here the fire kills are very important on the overworld bosses okay the airship bosses getting a fire kill versus stomping them is like a two to three second difference sometimes which is massive right so you can track the boss patterns based on you know hammer brother movements before you enter the castle Versus no Hammer Brother movements and uh, stuff like that. So you can actually control the boss patterns. I'm not going to get into crazy detail. However, I got a movement of one before I enter the castle. And the auto scroll is the same length every time. So I know what pattern I'm going to get. What's going to happen is the boss is going to run forward, do nothing, and then kind of shoot. So I can jump shoot, jump shoot, stomp on him, and then finish him off. Because I got a movement of one. Right? So that's in my mind. I'm like, that's what that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna run forward, do some shots. Instantly, he shoots. So right now, in my mind, nope, not doing what I thought he was gonna do because I have no idea why. It makes no sense. So now I have to think on the fly because he didn't do what he was... And I know it's weird to say what he was supposed to do, but he was actually supposed to do something different based on the amount of time it took me to get here, which is crazy. So I actually had to stomp kill him. I couldn't fire kill him. And look at how long the stomp is compared to a fire. So I lost about three or four seconds right there. So even in the even in the video during the run, like I'm 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 a little annoyed because that's why we track like we know these hammer brother pattern or these boss patterns. So it's very unfortunate uh, that this happened. All right, so we finished that pretty easy. All right, we'll start World 5. Let's go. So World 5, we're looking for the early P-Speed to try and save like a second or so. Very difficult. You got to cut it super close. I'm I'm right there, but I got like a weird speed. I got it, but didn't get it. It's one of those things. Hammer Brothers, they did a movement of two. I'm happy. As long as it's not a movement of four and not a movement of three, I'm very happy. Just don't be those things. So, because I'm on early hammer, I can change the way I'm using my items, which is very nice. So, I actually have an extra star here to use in the Twisty Castle, uh, which is really good because I can just jump through the Death Waffles uh, and do the first section much, much faster than normal, which is good. And the reason I can do that is because I do something called Fast 7-2, and you'll see that later in the run. Alright, another movement of 2. I'm happy. Dude, if I get all movements of 2 in World 5, I don't even care. I'm fine with that. Alright. So I use the music box there because I'm going to skip the bros. And uh, when you go through pipe transitions, it counts as a music box cycle. So if I used the music box and went into a pipe in the overworld, exit the pipe, went into the pipe and exit, the music box would be done. And the Hammer Brothers would be woken back up. So, the best place to use the music box is right here, pretty much. Because they stay asleep for one cycle. If I used it before the pipe, I wouldn't be able to skip them. And if I used it after 5-2, the pipe transition would screw it over. Right? So, I use the star here. Boom. Um, if you guys missed that, let me show you one more time in uh, slow mode uh, how many Death Waffles I run through here. So you can see how beneficial this star actually is. 
right? So no turn back. I ran. I would have. I would have taken damage from that one. I would have taken damage from that one. I would have taken damage from that one, and I wouldn't have taken. So that's how good the star is there. That's how much you can't run through that section just normally. You can't just go through it. You have to like do turn backs and wall rubs to get past it. So it's actually a pretty big time save there. All right. Normal twisty castle shenanigans. Oh, yeah. No pee keep there, but that's totally okay. That's not like a, it's not really a thing. I missed my A press there, so I stood for a second. Because I, you know, you want to jump up as fast as you can. So it's very possible for me to press A uh, too early and nothing happens. And that's, that's kind of what happened there. I've got two flower cards. I'm not too nervous about it. It's pretty easy to avoid getting a third flower. If I'm not stubborn, of course, which I wasn't. Sometimes when I get two flowers, I'm like, I'm not supposed to have two flowers. I'm not doing a turn back. And I get the fanfare and it screws me over. So I'm not too worried about coin ships because the Hammer Brothers in the bottom section, they're okay. I got another movement of two. So I'm happy and I didn't get this P-Speed, man. Sad, frowny face. I normally do get this P-Speed, but it's very possible for me not to get it. It happens. It's... I'm not too upset about it. Yeah, it's a big frowny face. Now the movement of two, I'm happy, man. All movements of two, keep them coming, man. So far, I've only gotten movements of two. This level worked. If 5-5 five, five doesn't work and 5-7 doesn't work, that's when I get really frustrated because one of them's got to work. Like, messing up both of them really sucks. It's a big time loss. All right. Movement of one. Hey, a movement of one in world five. Can you guys believe it? Can you believe it? Um, you may think that where the Hammer Brother is right now is a good spot for me. I can't skip them because I need the music box for the Piranha Plant in World 7. Um, you know, so I can't skip them. However, he is actually in an unfortunate position where I have to do extra map movements. I actually have to do over a second worth of extra map movements. I have to move left and up, which is all waste, right? You want to go right down. Left and up, that's a waste. And then down and right and down. So, you know, left up, down right. Big waste. I got a movement of four right there, though. That was a movement of four. Or maybe that... No, that was a movement of two, I think. Yeah, that was a movement of two, sorry. I don't think I got a movement of four in this world five. I think I got... Two movements of one, and then the rest were movements of two. All right. Oh, I got a movement of two, man. I need so I needed a movement of one there. Uh, when you get a movement of one, that helps you much more with the boss pattern. You get a much better boss pattern. Uh, but unfortunately, I did not get a movement of one. I got a movement of two. So I'm still gonna go for the fire kill. But it is going to be much harder. He's, because he's going to react fast. He's going to run forward and try and jump right away. Alright, so let's fast forward to the boss. I mean, I, so I can, I can normally get movement of two fire kills. But movement of one is so much better. So let's go ahead and take a look. We'll do the double shot. Jump. Double shoot, 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 shoot. I got stunned. But I shot a fireball before. So I actually... I only lost time by being stunned and taking damage. I didn't actually lose the fire kill. So I, I lost a couple seconds there. That was a big chunk of time lost. Had that not happened, I would have actually saved time in World 5. Sad face. So that's two bosses that screwed me over. That's a difference right there of almost six seconds. Right there. That's it. That's a lot of time. And I'm getting pretty decent RNG. The worlds are working fine. Right? And those are the things that are messing up right now. Not... That's not good. So here, the most important thing is that I don't take damage on this Hammer Brother. Because then the run is really over. But I can't waste time. Ah! Oh, that was so close, guys. We gotta... We gotta rewind. 
play that back in slow motion here. See how close I was to that hammer. Because if I take damage here, the run is over. And obviously, I risked it for the biscuit. So let's take a look here. So I see the hammer brother. He shot once. So I knew after I killed the first hammer brother, I knew the second hammer brother, this guy was going to throw it again. And I wanted to hit him after he threw it. So I jump up. See, I knew it. He was going to throw another one. And I'm, yo, dude, I'm doing like a moonwalk backwards. That's so, that's so trolly. Yeah, it's fun watching this stuff. It was a stupid thing that I did. I'm not impressed at all what I did. I'm surprised that I survived. That's really what it is. So I hit it, moonwalk, duck under. <laughs> what? That was way too close, dude. That was way too close. I'm going to pause it right at the best part. Right at the best part. Look at this. Inside the hammer right there. And I'm probably like one pixel. So his hitbox is like... A, a big rectangle and it's probably like right up there very close look at that in the hammer i got it that's crazy that was not a, that was not a smart play on my behalf to be honest i'm probably saying in the stream right now i was like i don't know how i'm alive all right so that's the that's the hammer brother with the cloud he moved up i can track him i know where he is that's pretty good I get this super swag leaf grab. So that loses me time as well, obviously. So it was all time loss combined together, right? Take, like take, ooh, and I kept the P-speed there, very difficult. Um, but yeah, so taking damage on the boss in World 5 caused me to do this level slower as well. So it's all time loss, man, it's all connected. But we got the star kill, 288, or 278. I can get a 280. So that lets you know, like the kind of time save. All right, Ham Brothers are moving. Movement of two. That's the cloud. That's good. If he moved down right after this level, I can get him out of the way and done and then just worry about the other one. So it's a hope and pray kind of situation. It's a very big hope and pray kind of situation. We don't know exactly where the other hammer brother is, but you better get the hell out of our way. That's what we're looking for. I got 88 coins, but I got five, so I'm good. I'm not worried about coin ship. He did not move. He did a movement of two, unfortunately. So we still don't know where the other Hammer Brother is. He's either up or down. I don't know which one, so I don't think about it. Because I can't see him. It's a waste. Previous run, I messed this up, but luckily I nailed this. I think I let yet. Yeah. So, so that was actually a little time loss there. Um, anyone who hasn't understood or learned what you're doing there is... What I'm doing is I'm rushing with the P-Wing in the basement of this section... And then whenever I get to the part with the top section and then the big downhill, there's too many sprites on the screen. There's too many. Remember I said four sprites and the game lags? Well, if there's five, then the game can't even spawn new enemies that I'm loading when I'm moving on the screen. And that's what you do there to abuse the mechanics and cause the nipper to not spawn. However, I lagged so much that both of them didn't spawn. So that's actually slower. You don't want to lag too much and cause both of them to despawn because... You're creating more lag than you need to. So that was actually a time loss there. But we still did it. It's still fine. Right. The game can only load so many enemies at once. Right? So when you have too many of them on the screen and you start loading more, they won't actually load. They'll despawn. Hammer Brother moved down. Okay, so here we are. So I get the right Hammer Brother. We need this Hammer Brother in the bottom to move left. If he moves up, we're screwed. We lose 10 seconds because we don't need to fight this guy. Boom, and then he moved left, thankfully. That's good. That's some really good RNG. He's also in a position to give us a bunch of movements of one for the rest of the world. That's good as well. So we just need to clutch this level out. Looking pretty solid. Still got 88 coins, but I don't have to worry about coin shifts for the rest of the game, so I'm I'm safe. I'm safe. Uh, we did not get an extra P-Wing, but we didn't use a P-Wing in 5-1, so we have a P-Wing right now. For 6-9, Kappa. Um, so we don't have to wall jump. We don't have to wall jump manipulation. We don't have to use an extra star for wall jump manipulation. So we just get to do normal uh, warpless route, which is actually really relieving. I don't have to worry about it. It's comfortable. I just get to do this level fast. I don't have to worry about setting up sub pixels on the boom boom. I don't have to worry about using the extra star. I don't have to worry about wall jump working. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff right now. 
which is exactly what I don't want to worry about. More movements of one, keep them coming. Yeah, get that P-Wing, right on. Nice. I did an extra fly there because I didn't want to miss the ledge. I think that was a smart play there. I was kind of hoping for that. I was kind of hoping for that uh, flower there, but I didn't get it, unfortunately. All right, Fortress, the last thing, which is very easy. This is a very easy Fortress. And this route of Warpless, by not doing a wall jump, I get an I get my big Mario here. So I get it to actually try the clip here. And you try and go for it. Cut it close. I didn't get it, unfortunately. Now, if I would have got that clip, that would have saved like six or seven seconds, which would be fantastic. That would have been that would have been a great grind. I entered that door a little late. I could have saved some frames by entering it earlier. Probably like actually 0.2 or 0.3 seconds faster had I entered it. But you know, the run's going crazy. I'm not trying to be overly critical on myself. Things are going great. World six was fantastic. I got two movements of two, and the rest were movements of one. Pretty good. I didn't I didn't really make a mistake in any levels. I lost a little bit of time in 641, but that's not because that is definitely not because I messed up or anything. It's because the boss from World 5, right? I had to get the leaf, which is the time one. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Ooh, you guys are lucky I'm gonna skip the airship. Perfect time to raid me. Because on YouTube I would skip the airship. I'd completely cut it, so now we have a chance to talk and I can talk to chat. What's going on, guys? I hope you had some good races. Thank you so much for the raids. We are just breaking down my almost world record from yesterday, my 5039 early hammer manipulation run. Breaking it down, looking all looking at all the little knickknacks and all the close calls and time saves and time losses and stuff. So yeah, perfect timing. I hope you guys had a good stream and thanks for the raid. Don't forget to give me a follow, welcome raiders. Alright. So the airship, we can pretty much skip. So I'm going to stop the skip right here, YouTube, because uh, subpixel manipulation is done on this. And, you know, anyone who doesn't know, I'm sure a lot of you do know about it. But what I try and do is I try and set up a perfect subpixel so that I can get the clip very consistently after this. So the idea of what I'm doing here to set up a subpixel is um, when Mario actually moves one full pixel to the right, if you do it by, like, one frame, Mario's subpixel value will be zero because it was 15... Mario had a high subpixel value, and then he moved right one pixel, so it goes back down to zero. If I continued moving right, Mario wouldn't move one pixel until I circled past 15 and back to zero again. The same thing applies for going left. Uh, if I have a subpixel value of 15 and I move left a bunch, I'm going to drop from 15 down to 1, down to zero, and then whenever I move one pixel to the left, I'm going to go back to 15 and then drop back down to 1 by tapping right. But I'm not moving a pixel, I'm just tapping my subpixels. When they get low, I move one pixel to the right. Um, I do this so that I can do a standing clip in 7-1, which is much easier than a duck clip. Uh, it's got its own benefits and disadvantages. So the idea is I want to move right one pixel, so I have a subpixel value from anywhere between 0 and like 6. So that whenever I start tapping left, I can land on a subpixel value of exactly 15 or 14. Those are the only two subpixels that will allow me to do the standing clip. That's kind of what I'm going for here. So let me let me break it down. Let me go slow mo so you guys can watch it. So I move right there. So now I want to start tapping left and move one pixel left. All right. So I'm tapping left. I didn't I didn't move a pixel there. Mario's body moved, but I actually didn't move anywhere on the x axis. I didn't move anywhere. And even though I'm tapping left, my subpixel value is decreasing. But I'm not actually moving anywhere on the x-axis. I, When I go past zero, that's when I move. Right there. You see that? Right there. I moved a pixel there, so I stop. There you go. So now I'm ready. Boom. Time save. So you actually visually got to see me move one pixel. Right? So I, I moved there, but I didn't move along the x-axis. And then there, I moved one pixel. Just slightly tap, move one pixel. So now I know my subpixel value is like 15, maybe 14. And those are the only two that work. And that's pretty much how that works. Okay. <laughs> so we can fast forward through this section. The very slightest movement, right? Because you can move subpixels, but not actually move pixels. You're not moving anywhere. You're staying in the same spot. It's not until 
the subpixels circle back around where you move. There's 15, there's 16 subpixels in one pixel, so you have to move 16 subpixels before you move one pixel. Right? And if I did it correctly, the stand clip will work, and I did it correctly, right? So that's that's what makes it very easy and consistent. But if I missed that jump, all the attempts after that would be RNG. They'd be completely RNG. I can't control it after that. It's only for one try. You get one chance. Now, I mentioned Fast 7-2 earlier in the video, and we're going to do Fast 7-2 right here, which means I'm going to enter this level without a star. Anyone who's watched Mario 3, Mario 3 speedruns for a long time, you would know that I equip the star here, right? I equip the star, and I run down, and I build P-Speed, and I run back up, jump up, and then I build P-Speed, and then I go. Fast 7-2 is much more difficult than that, uh, because I use damage boosting and P-Speed manipulation to get P-Speed. So what I do here is... I take damage there, and when you take damage, your P-meter cycle is actually still continuing even though I'm taking damage. So I use this uh, method to abuse building more P-meter. So I build three arrows, and then whenever I land, I land again, and then boom, I get the P-speed. I, you know, you land again, and boom, get the, you know, I make it sound so easy, but it's incredibly complicated. And I actually hit the right pixel to enter the pipe. There's only one pixel to get in that pipe. And I got it. So that was an incredible level. Without going into too crazy detail, that was just an absolutely fantastic level right there. Uh, couldn't have done it any better. Really couldn't have. Maybe fat, maybe better turnbacks over the piranha plants. But other than that, that was absolutely beautiful. I was very happy with that level. And that's the trade-off. If I do that, not only is doing that faster than a star, uh, but I get to save the star to do the twisty. It's just a net profit of like three seconds altogether. It's just a much better play, um, but it's a much more difficult play. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone at all. Fast 7-2 just started getting used in runs this year by me. Um, Haxer started to use it, but his consistency wasn't overly high, and he was getting tired of losing runs to 7-2 after getting 7-1 first try, so it's not worth it. It's not worth it. All right, so we got the P-Wing. So, I don't have an extra P-Wing, so this route does force me to do a clip, right? Because I use two music boxes in World 4 and 5, so I don't get that extra P-Wing. So now I have to set up a subpixel manipulation here. Um, so, 7-1 subpixel manipulation. The standing clip only works on subpixel value 14 and 15. Luckily for this one, the window's bigger. Subpixel values 3 to 11 or 3 to 10 will allow you to do the standing clip. So the window's much bigger. So the idea is to move one pixel to the right and kind of tap a little bit more to make sure you're above subpixel three. And that's what I do here. Take damage, because with the leaf, it's harder to clip. So I move one pixel, and then I move a little bit. Right there. Right there, easy peasy. Doop, 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 doop. So if I, if I set up my subpixel correctly, I, I should get this first try as long as I jump properly, and I do. This run is hot. 7-1 first try, 7-6 first try, fast 7-2, and everything else has gone very nicely. So right here, heart rate, nerves, boom, skyrocket. Because I, because you got the things that are going to... All I need to do is get the Hammer Brothers suit and do the levels normally. Right? Dope Vegeta notification right there. Sick. So now I'm really nervous. Because it, if I do this correctly, then it's just hands holding me back. I got the extra star because fast 7-2. Right? Very good. Very nice payoff. Okay, hit that. I drop down there, which I've never done, but doesn't it really didn't affect me that much. Boom. Alright. P speed. Out of the way, Seymour Skinner. Kept P speed with the Hammer Brothers suit. And then I want to try and keep the transition here. Kept P speed there. Build it back up. Beautiful. That level I could have saved. I probably lost like 0.5 from falling there. Not even. Probably like 0.3. So I could do it a little bit faster. Skip 7-9. Don't need to do it because I'm on world record pace. Remember, the world record gets one hand in it. So like I said earlier, as long as I'm below plus 20 and get no hands, I'll world record. That's all I need. Less than three. Super sexy castle. Look at that. Very beautiful. Right now, I'm like, oh man, I'm in the clear right now. Almost messed that up. And I don't think I got the swag. No, I didn't, because I didn't do a turn back. Beautiful. This World 7 is amazing. Fantastic World 7 right there. Absolutely beautiful. Music box. Get the heck out of here. So right now, 
I'm very nervous because all I need is no hands to get the world record. And like, not only do I need no hands to get the world record, but the gameplay in all of these worlds have been phenomenal. I got screwed over by the two bosses. Yeah, you can see my hands shaking. That's how nervous I am. Here, let me move this so YouTube can see. Look at that. It's, it's, I'm so nervous because like everything worked. I didn't get an extra hammer, brother. Right? I didn't get movements of four. I didn't get any movement of four in this run. Not a single movement of four. I got seven, one, and seven, six first try. Right? I got the early hammer. I'm not super far behind. This is just an all around beautiful run. Just an all around beautiful run. I could have actually increased my time. Like, I could have saved probably an additional 10 seconds if I went for 7 9. But right now, I don't need to go for 7 9 for world records. So, why go for it, right? It's like, uh, it's like when somebody's 20 seconds ahead of their PB and they enter Bowser's Castle and they go for the elevator clip. Like, why would you do that? What's the point? It's not gonna... Right? Just, just secure the PB. The, like, you just need to go for PBs and PBs, right? Alright, so, auto-scroller. Uh, we don't really want to watch this. You can't kill the bosses with the Hammer Brother suit, and that is why you see me stomp kill here. Um, a lot of people ask me that. You cannot hit them with the hammers here. You cannot do it. It's just not possible. They go right through them. So the only other big time swing here is if I got an off-screen wand grab, which I always try for. Unfortunately, I didn't get. Boom! Look at that time save. 1.6. So, if I can save 4 seconds in World 8, I can still get a hand in World Record. So we're just going to slowly kind of fast forward through because it's just kind of auto-scrollers. A little bit of auto-scrollers here and there. You know... Um, the D-Lag strat is right here. That's the only thing interesting in this auto-scroller. So I lagged probably four frames there, four or five frames there. That's about it. Right on. Uh, Boomerang Bro, I need him to move backwards to save some time. And, uh, if I remember correctly, I actually... Yeah, I got the worst pattern. So what's interesting about this pattern is that not only did the Boomerang Bro not decide right away where he was gonna go, but he actually started to move backwards, and then he was like, nah, fuck it, I'm moving forward. And not only did he move forward, but he threw the boomerang later. The chest will not appear until everything's off the screen. So if the boomerang bro moves forward and throws the boomerang, the boomerang is going to be on the screen for longer because he moved further into the battlefield. If he moved backwards and threw the boomerang, it'd be on, it would be in the, the room for a shorter amount of time, right? And that's why it's really tricky here. So he moved forward and threw his boomerang. Right? So the boomerang is right here, but if he threw the boomerang here, the boomerang would be right here. Right? You can see the time difference. That's where the time save would have been. So unfortunately, I lose some time there. It's crazy, man. There's so much crap in this game. Even when you think the run is over, you should always just keep going because there's just so much crap here and there. Alright, so now I'm really nervous. Got the hammer suit. Uh, chat is going crazy right now. They're all freaking out. They're no hands, right? It's going, it's going wild. But we're doing really well here. So we get through this. Go for the no hands. Nice. Get the get the boom boom kill super fast. Almost missed my hammer, which would have been really unfortunate. Alright, we come through the pipe. And we get past the first hand, but we get pulled in by the second hand. So world record pretty much lost. I didn't go for P-Speed because I was like, if I can still save a lot of time in this world, I can get the world record here. It's just so close, man. It's just so close. So we only got one hand, which is nice. That's good. That's just exactly what we got in uh, the world record. We also got a longer hand in the world record. Hand two is the shortest one, so that would technically be a little time save there. All right, we get through the auto scroller pretty clean. So now, so I'm still very serious right here because it's very likely that I can get the world record. It's very possible. We lost a little time from the boomerang, bro. Uh, these levels, this looks like it's working great. Nicely done. Nicely done. Very beautiful. Alright, we got level 2 going on here. The sun level. The famous sun level. Boom. We got the sun. Beautiful level. God, if I would have got no hands and I performed like this, holy crap. And I'm still really nervous because I still want to clutch out a really good run. All right, so we got the star here, which is perfect. I manned up and didn't use the star. So 
Right on. Got the P-Speed. This is really good. That's nice and fast. So the time losses are the Boomerang Bro, essentially. Um, but we should have got a time save from the second hand. Um, but this is actually going to be a pretty significant time loss here. Uh, if I don't go for the overkill, I throw the hammer here and he'd die right away. But because I didn't get the overkill, I killed him later than when, if you don't go for the overkill, you would kill him earlier. So it was just an all, all in all time loss. If I would have got the overkill though, that would have been a much, much better time save there. Sadly, I didn't get it. So last auto scroller, I'm super focused, right? Cause like, I, I don't know for sure. Could this be a one second world record? That'd be really cool, man. Why not? So now we're in Bowser's castle. So no point in going for the clip. Just do it normally. No point in going for anything. You know, let's get a good stair climb here. Clean, clean. Oh my God. That was like a second time loss right there. I didn't, I couldn't afford that. I was really hoping that didn't screw me over. I got 25 seconds left. Bowser dies right away. I'm doing some turnbacks here. Not as clean as I've done it before. We killed Bowser with 15 seconds left on the clock. Eee! As you can see, the crowd's cheering for me, even on this playback. Absolutely fantastic run. So beautiful. I almost got it too. I was so close and right there, 2.84 seconds. So if I would have either not gone for the overkill or gotten the overkill and not missed that one up clip, I probably would have got a really, really good world record right there. God, and I was so nervous too. That was a really, really good run. Ooh, that was, oh man, watching that, watching that back, even watching that back, I was getting nervous. Like it's just a, it's just an incredible run. Um. I, I still would have liked to have gotten, you know, one or two second world record because we just started the early hammer manipulations. It's still cool to see how how powerful the early hammer manipulation is. And oh man, I just absolutely loved it. I had so much fun. Well, regardless of everything, YouTube, I hope you guys had a lot of fun uh, watching the run and the playback. And I hope you guys learned some stuff. And I, I hope you enjoyed the breakdown, the slowdowns, and really looking at where I almost took damage and how close a lot of these things are. These runs aren't as simple as do the tricks in the levels and get away with it because sometimes the tricks in the levels are close calls and you're almost taking damage and, and crap's going anywhere. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Woo!